Okay, folks, we're back again. Um, this is Professor Richard Holizak talking to you about the Computer Information Systems major at uh, Baruch College. Uh, so in this video, we're going to talk about uh, just a random assortment of tips that I have on getting the most out of your CIS degree. Uh, these are just things that I've come up with over uh, the last 15 years or so in teaching CIS and uh, questions and answers with students and um, hopefully you'll get a little bit more out of this. Uh, so as always, uh, this is who I am, my email address, my website on CISnet, and my personal website on holozak.com. Uh, as always, your comments, suggestions, questions are welcome. Okay, we spent the first two videos talking about the CIS major uh, in terms of what it's all about, what the world of CIS is, what your required courses are, what your elective courses are. I threw up a couple of uh, quick videos about some elective tracks. I'll keep putting more of those up there as we, as we move along. But really what I wanted to get to in this video is um, how you can prepare yourself and do extra things uh, outside of the classroom to really get the most out of the, the CIS degree here. Um, now this may come as a shock to you but um, you should know that a lot of what you will learn while you're in college um, has uh, not so much to do with what you you get sitting in a classroom listening to a lecture. Um, at least my experience when I was an undergrad, and I, I think um, a lot of students will agree here, that it's when you get together with other students outside of class, or when you try projects, you try things on your own, that's when you really start to get the ideas, um, you know, in a very concrete way. Uh, what I'm learning in the classroom actually gets used in the real world. And, and so, again, in order to get the most out of the CIS degree, you, you got to be willing to do more than just sit in class for an hour and 15 minutes twice a day. You have to kind of go above and beyond. And so here's, again, some ideas. If you're just getting started with CIS, you're starting with some of the... Um, you know, the major courses like the 3100 or the 3400, these are some things that you might want to start getting uh, going with. So here we go. Random assortment of tips. Number one, you need to identify a development environment. Um, so this needs to be a place where you're going to carry out your homework assignments and your projects. Now, I know a lot of you have like an iPad or, or a mobile phone that's not really going to cut it for the courses that that we need to um, that we need to get you through here uh, you're going to need some type of access to a PC an Intel based PC uh, it can ultimately be running Windows but it can also be um, you know one of the the newer Mac machines uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that but basically you have to resign yourself to the fact that if you if you have a PC at home you're going to dedicate that to do your work. If you have a PC you're allowed to use in your workplace for homework assignments um, you have to get that cleared. Maybe you have to talk to your boss or your IT folks to make sure you can install some software that you might need in order to do your work. If you don't have a PC at home, you don't have a PC at work um, you're going to have to commit yourself to coming into school and using the computer labs. All of the work that we do in all of our classes is supported by the computer labs and in the school. And I'm sure if you've been on Baruch's campus at any particular time, uh, you will see that we have ample computer labs. They are fully staffed. They have tons of software available to you. Um, so you really kind of have to have an honest conversation with yourself that, look, I know I'm going to need to do this work outside of class and, and I'm willing to either invest in a home PC or, or a PC at work or a laptop or something um, or I'm going to have to be working in the school computer labs. Uh, another alternative I just thought of on the fly is that the um, library will rent out laptops. So you can check out a laptop from the library just like you check out a book and then you can get your work done that way as well. Okay. Once you've identified that development environment, you really need to obtain the necessary software. Uh, so for CIS 3100, the Object Oriented Programming and, and other programming courses, you're going to need Visual Studio, and that's what that um, 
this little uh, uh, VS means right here, Visual Studio for the CIS 3100 object oriented programming class. Um, if you're going to be taking CIS 3400, which is the database systems class, you're going to need to get MS Access, Microsoft Access. Um, again, if you bought a PC for your homework or you, you have a, a laptop and you got the full version of Microsoft Access, not the studio, uh, I'm sorry, you got the full version of Microsoft Office, uh, not the student edition, the full version, uh, it's going to contain the Microsoft Access uh, in there. All right, now, next big thing. A lot of students are coming to us with Macs. They have a MacBook. Okay, I'm not talking about iPhones and iPads and iPad minis and all that i stuff. All right, we're talking about a MacBook that's based on an Intel processor. Okay, there's some things that you can do to get you going here because Microsoft Access and Visual Studio, they're not going to run on your Mac and your Mac operating system. There are tools like Boot Camp. All right, which allow you to boot up your computer into either the Mac OS or into another operating system like Windows. Uh, VirtualBox and Parallels are programs that virtualize your CPU so that you can run both the Mac OS and the Windows operating system at the same time on your computer. Boot Camp, you have to boot up in one operating system and you're stuck with it until you reboot. VirtualBox and Parallels, you can run both operating systems at the same time. Okay, so if you have a Mac, look into getting VirtualBox Parallels. There's a few other things that folks have used um, that I think they're happy with. You can ask around what your other students are doing. Um, and then you can load up maybe the Windows 7 operating system. Maybe if your Mac's not so powerful, you can get Windows XP and load it on there. You do need to have a, an official version of those operating systems. You can't just pirate a copy and, and hope that it works. It's got to be the real deal in order for these guys to work. So uh, hopefully you'll be able to do that. <clears throat> okay. Other tips. Um, it's amazing to me when I teach a senior level class Students have been at Baruch College for two years or for four years, and they've never been to the Career Development Center. All right? If you haven't gone there, um, doesn't matter if you're a freshman, if you're a sophomore, junior, senior, doesn't matter. They are there to help you get a job. It's what their job is. Okay. Now, I'll give you a perfectly honest story. When I was an undergraduate, I thought, gee, if I can make a resume and it looks good, that's all I need. I can go and get a job. And, and I was frankly very wrong about that. There are ways of writing a resume. There are nuances to how you articulate or talk about your experiences and your coursework and so on. These folks at the Career Development Center know all of this. They've been through it. They see it day after day. They see students submitting resumes and applications to companies and they get shot down in five minutes because they have a misspelling on their resume or they wrote something that doesn't make any sense or they have some wacky email address that they put at the top that's, that's just offensive to people. All of these are really silly, common mistakes that students make all the time. Easiest way, go to Career Development Center, register with them, it's all free. Um, second floor of the vertical campus, you can find out uh, much, much more. So get them to critique your resume. Um, sign up for a mock interview. You don't want to go into an interview with some company and have that be the first time you've ever been in an interview situation. Okay, So they have mock interviews. They'll have people come in and they'll interview just like you would be if you were at a company. All right, You'll learn a lot about yourself, a lot about how to answer questions and so on. Um, for, uh, third thing here. They have email alerts, right? So you can sign up on their star search system. So any CIS related job postings that come in, you'll get an email alert. You can immediately apply to that. And that would be for internships or for, um, for full time. Uh, and especially, this is super, super important. I know a lot of students are working full time, maybe not necessarily in IT or in the computer field. I mean, everybody's got to work, you got to make a living, you got to pay your bills. If you've never worked in IT before, you've really got to pay some attention. Do everything in your power to try to get an internship. It's really, really important here. Um, you know, it's the old saying, you, you can't get a job without experience, and you can't get experience without a job. And, and really, this is what internships are designed to do. 
If you can get to the Career Development Center as a sophomore student and you can land an internship between your sophomore and junior year, that's golden. Even if it's just kind of on the um, on the outskirts of doing something in technology, at least you know getting that first summer job, um, having that responsibility, that's that can really go a long way. Um, so again, please don't neglect the Career Development Center. There are wonderful folks there. They're there to help you out. All right. Um, last one on this page here is to join our Facebook group. Uh, yes, we are um, slowly but surely um, wandering our way into the Web 2.0, Web 3.0 world, whatever you want to call it, social media. Um, there's the link. I don't even know why there's that number there, but um, go on ahead and, uh, and join us on that Facebook group. Uh, we're happy to have you there. Students are posting internships. They're posting their experiences, asking questions, what courses to take, what professors to take. Um, so that obviously the more people who contribute, the better it is for everyone. All right, so here's even more tips. Again, I know you're all busy. Everybody's busy. Everybody's working, working one job, two jobs, taking four courses, five courses. If your goal here is to have a career in information systems, in IT, you need to get some experience outside of the classroom. Um, it's really tough when you're graduating with a bunch of other students and all you've done is basically gone through the motions, you sat in the class, you did the homework, you did okay on the tests, and that's it. You need to take some initiative, you need to take another step. All right. Now most of these things that I have on this list you can do on your own time. You don't necessarily have to do everything 9 to 5. If you get an hour on the weekend or you get a few hours at night after you get off your job, um, these are some things that you might want to look at. Right. Uh, so again, a lot of these are things that uh, help me learn as well even when I was an undergraduate so you know find someone who's setting up a new PC right maybe they get a new computer they get a new laptop or maybe they get a Mac and you can help them install parallels so they can also install Windows 7 right uh, getting someone uh, helping someone out is a great way to really learn yourself okay uh, set up your own website and by this I don't mean just you know go to some website hosting provider and you click a mouse three times and you've got an you know their instant website um, get a little website you can do it pretty cheaply but write your own HTML learn how to write HTML on your own okay even if you don't have to use Dreamweaver or or any of these fancy tools just sit down with a quick tutorial. I've got tutorials on my website. I can show you that later on. Uh, and learn to write some decent HTML code. Even if it's just to recreate your resume or just you know say, hey, this is all about me. It's a great experience. You'll really learn a lot about how the you know the internals of how the web works. Um, along with that, maybe learn a new programming language. Okay, um, I don't know. Folks are, are really hot on C sharp these days. Maybe sit down with a quick simple C sharp tutorial and just slog through it learn a couple of um, you know a couple of quick statements in the language just try and do a hello world program or do something simple and and sort of get going um, you, know, you could do this with something like Python or Perl uh, or a scripting language if you have your own website and you really want to dig in you might do something like PHP or if your hosting provider supports it active server pages Again, there are lots of tutorials out there. So the idea is just try to expose yourself to a couple of these different areas. You never know. You might really like it. You might totally get into it. And, and just it changes your mind about what programming is or, or, or how you like to work with computers. Uh, next on the list is, is volunteer. Help out a business or an organization set up a database. I guarantee you there is a school or um, a, a church or a synagogue or, or some other organization in your area that you know would love to have someone come in and help them fix up a computer right help out a business I'm sure you have a friend or you have a um, someone in your family has a family run business help them set up a computer um, get them to do a backup of their data right I mean all these kind of common things that we talk about in CIS classes try and put them into action see if you can help somebody set up a database um, even set up a website for their business right all of these things again could do on your own time can do when you have a little bit of free time um, build an app. There are wonderful um, 
tutorials and development kits. Uh, you can get the Android development kit. You just download that package. It runs right on the desktop. There are tons of tutorials that are right in there. Um, just try it out. Build an app. Find a friend that has an Android phone. Hook it up with a USB cable. See if you can get your, your simple little app, your demo app, to run on somebody's Android phone, right? Um, again, can do it on your own time. There's all kind of tutorials out there that can get you going. Uh, last but not least, ask your professors for ideas. If you're stuck, you don't know well, what you might be interested in, have a five-minute conversation, ten-minute conversation with one of your professors. I'm happy to chat with you about that. That's why we like to have the comments on the, on the Facebook page, um, on the YouTube account. Hopefully you can uh, uh, dig in there and, and get some ideas uh, that you can work on. Okay, so I'm going to call it quits for this video. What I want to do in the next video is, um, you know, we mentioned a couple of things like getting, um, sorry, I got to go back here, uh, getting things like Microsoft Access and Visual Studio, uh, Windows 7. Um, we're going to do this in the next video. We're going to talk about how, as a CIS student at Baruch, you can get all of that software for free. Okay, so just going to sign off again. As always, happy to hear your comments and suggestions and questions.